It's that time again we've got some more parts from Cut Price Racing. This time we got a clutch, chain, sprocket and a boss kit for the steering wheel. Um, for the clutch I went a 12 tooth and for the rear sprocket I believe it's a 73. Um, all in 35 pitch. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have to modify the back half of the frame before we put the rear sprocket on so that's what we're going to be working on now. Hope you enjoy. Alright, so like I said earlier, we're doing one of the final and the biggest mods on the Cali cart uh, so that we can finally set up the rear axle probably and run a chain. Um, we've stripped it all down, uh, took the axle out, took the seat out, uh, took the motor off. Um, now what I've got to do here is cut the back half of the frame. I've got to cut this pipe and replace it with a pipe that's got a bend in it so that um, the sprocket uh, clears the, uh, that part of the frame. If I tried to do it now, it would just hit it. Um, so we're going to be cutting that bar out. Um, we're going to have to take the seat mount off and make our own seat mount. Um, biggest and probably most important thing if you're going to do something like this is try and reinforce the rear end. That's why I've tacked this thick bit of plate on here. Um, Basically, because if you're going to cut the back half of the frame, this one bar um, is the only real bar that's stopping the back of the frame springing like that as soon as you cut it. And you don't want to do that, of course, because then it's going to throw off the alignment of everything in the rear end. So, yeah, tack something sturdy across the back so that if you do cut that bar out or you plan on making any modifications to your frame, it's a good idea to stiffen it first so that it stays where it's meant to be before you do any of that sort of stuff. Safety first. <laughs> All right, so we've cut the back half of the frame out. Um, just roughly, we'll quickly show you what our next step is. We've got our bent bit of pipe here. As you can see, I've cut it to the angle it needs to be. And I've sort of notched it so that it fits the contour of the frame itself. Then we've got this, a bit of one inch axle steel. And what we're going to do is use this as a plug in there for when we put these two together. That way, when I weld this up, I can leave a bit of a gap between the two pipes and I can get a much stronger weld in there then with a bit of gap. Alright, so we've got the pipe in, all welded up, all perfect, um, painted so the welds don't rust. Only a little bit of cleaning to do, just to get the little bits of like welding slag off it. That's alright. As you can see, all in out of the road, primed so it shouldn't rust. Um, Crash just finished cleaning up the original seat mount that was here, so that the motor's got a little bit more room to slide forward. This particular mount shouldn't get in the road. If it does, we'll clean it up, but I haven't cleaned it up on the other one and it doesn't get in the way. So our next step is to, um, I have to reverse the axle on this one. So, well, because I don't want to have to go and get another keyway cut in the axle. So I'm just going to reverse the axle, um, line all the bearings up and everything, um, make sure the sprocket's in the right spot, and then we're going to put the motor on and then we'll go through doing the clutch and um, the chain. Alright, quick update. Um, it's been a day or two since we did any work on the Cali cart. It's been really hot here at the moment. We're in, in the middle of kind of a heat wave. Um, so we haven't really been working like right through the day. We'll, you know, we'll do an hour or two in the morning when it's nice and cold and then a bit more in the afternoons. Um, when I left off last I said I'm going to have to flip the axle because I didn't want to get another key steel or a keyway machined into the axle. Uh, I didn't have a choice yesterday. I took the, uh, the axle to a local machine shop and got them to cut another keyway for me. Um, so I've got the axle in, the wheels back on, um, the sprocket hubs on and I've put the sprocket on that. I'll show you all that shortly. Um, and then hopefully today we're going to continue on with um, putting the motor on and uh, lining the chain and everything up. And then we've got to, 
I'm not going to make any seat mounts just yet because the seat I've got is too small. I need to get a bigger one. Um, so yeah, once we've basically got the motor and the chain and the sprocket and everything on, that's about what all we can do until we get another seat. All right. So like I said before, we're continuing on um, just sending the axle and the and the sprocket and chain and all that up. Um, like I said, I've put the sprocket on the axle. Um, I've also put the clutch on the motor. Um, only real tip I have for that is when you put the clutch on, you want to make sure there's always going to be a tiny little bit of the shaft still left outside the clutch. You want to make sure that you've got a washer that sits over the shaft, but not over the actual the clutch itself where the E-clip goes or the circlip goes, whatever you want to call it. Um, because you don't want the clutch sliding on the shaft. We have a slight problem with that on the blue cart and occasionally the clutch actually grabs when the mo uh, motor's idling and the cart tries to take off and stalls. So you want to make sure that the clutch is on firm but the bell can still spin freely. So the clutch can't move side to side but the bell can still spin freely. Um, so the next step we're going to do now is we're going to um, We've got the chain lined out sort of how we want it, and now we're going to mark it and um, cut a link out of it. So that the, obviously the chain is the right length. Um, I'll show you how how I do it, how I've always found it to be easier. When you you unline your chain up and pull it tight over the top, so it's linked up. You see, there's our actual master link. So what I do is once I've got the chain sitting how I want it, nice and tight. It's a good idea to always pull your motor back as far as it can come because then you know you've got room to move forward um, if you need to tighten the chain. So what I do is I've got my master link laid down on the sprocket. I've got it pulled as tight as I want it and then obviously this is where the chain is going to finish but what we need to pay attention to is the master link itself is actually an outer link, right? So it's gonna finish on obviously on an outer link, right? So when we get to here and we're gonna cut our chain, we need to make sure that the link that we're cutting finishes on an inner link, right? So that the obviously the master link can go around the outside of it. So what we're gonna do here is this is our inner link. So what I do is I mark the inner link where I want to cut and then I'll mark the one back from it that's got to come off as well on the waist side of the chain. Right, just so you know which two which two pins you have to grind down in order for the chain to line up. Right, so I'm not going to make you sit through me doing this, it's long and boring, but basically what I do is I grind the pins down and then I get a flathead in there and I pop the side of the link off which is going to give us um, it's going to expose the right link for the master link. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be back and show you how that turned out. Alright, so I've got the chain cut down, shortened how I want it. Um, like I said before, grind down the, the pins of the chain and then what I do is I get a screwdriver in behind the link and give it a tap and knock the link off or the outer link off and then you can just dismantle it and it's pretty much self-explanatory from there how it goes together. Um, so now our next step is obviously to put the chain on. We've done this before in another video but I'll cover it just quickly in case anybody doesn't want to go through and have a look for that. <clears throat> when you want to take these master clips off, my suggestion is you go to the outer side of the clip, you the clip there, go to this side of the clip, the flathead, right? Rest your index finger over the closed side of the clip and push from the open side. That way when the clip pops off, it's not gonna fling across the floor and you're not gonna lose it. So we've done that. Now we put our little retaining link on, our little outer link. And once again, like I've mentioned earlier, when putting these clips on, always try to put the, or always do put, the closed side of the clip in the direction of which the chain's gonna travel. Less chance of it getting caught on something and then opening up. And of course, chain falls off and ruins all your fun so get it on once again keeping the finger over it so it doesn't take off anywhere there you go push him on done deal right and because I've moved the motor back yeah the chain still looks a little sloppy um, it's not a bad idea to have a chain a little sloppy matter of fact probably should uh, most chains like motorbike chains should 
should have a loose spot and a tight spot. It's just the nature of the way sometimes the sprockets are cut, they're not always perfectly round. Um, so a loose spot and a tight spot in the chain is good. Um, if you've got it all done and you've tightened your engine down and it's difficult to, you, if your rear wheels don't move easily with just a little flick, then, um, yeah, then loosen your motor off, your chain's way too tight. You should just be able to flick it like that and have your wheels or your chain move nice and easily. This one's still a little loose. The motor isn't bolted down perfectly, but um, yeah, I'll get to that shortly. That's, you know, basically everyone knows how to do that. Loosen the bolts at the bottom and slide your motor forward. Hello! <laughs> cool.